Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. Got another Master Duel video for you. So we're finally coming back to Pearly. Uh, it has definitely been a hot minute since I've played this deck. And I think that's true of a lot of people, actually, or just in general, right? Um, especially since Delicious went to 1 and regular Pearly went to 2. Uh, and I think that Pretty was also at 2 for this, uh, you know, long time as well. Uh, yeah, these cards all getting hit. Um, I think we came a little bit early for this deck, or maybe it's more like the Epperly Noir should have come a little bit later than it did. Uh, in either case, I feel like this deck kind of just sat in, in, in shambles uh, for quite a while, just not really being played too much. Uh, I saw it occasionally splashed uh, with other things like Snake Eye or Tear Limb, but beyond that, really did not see much of Pearly. Now, however, we have the Epperly Noir in the game, the new Rank 2. Uh, and this actually does a lot to boost the deck's consistency, uh, and it'll make it a lot easier to go into the Expertly Noir on turn one. Uh, so a lot of the reason why this deck lost a lot of steam is that in order to set up their main boss monster, the Expertly Noir, with the Tower's Protection, uh, as well as multiple bounces, uh, being able to, the Tower's Protection meaning it's unaffected by your opponent's activated effects, um, you know, the main way to do that was with your one of Delicious Memory. And, you know, with my friend Pearly, your main searcher for the quick way spell is not letting you necessarily decide which one you get. Uh, you have to pick Rainway between one of three. Uh, you know, you can't guarantee that you're able to do your turn one line, which is obviously a problem for, like, you know, any deck out there. Um, however, with the Little Noir, the Epperly Noir, the Rank 2 version, now we can guarantee going into Exploit Noir much more easily. In fact, all you really need to open is one copy of Sleepy Memory, uh, and then you can go into an Epperly Noir. Not only can you go into an, ep or an Expertly Noir, um, but you can also potentially draw multiple cards per turn uh, or even set up a bunch of materials with Delicious anyway. I'll show you about the lines that utilize, or the, the, the bare bones line that utilizes Epperly Noir. We'll look at that more in our first duel of this video. Um, so my build here is pretty standard, like pretty basic Pearly stuff. Um, I'm not on the Ghost Trick package, mostly because I don't have those cards crafted. Uh, I do definitely think that, well, you know, that's the thing. I don't have those cards crafted, so I've never played with that variant myself. Um, but I've just seen and heard a lot of people say, more people who are more knowledgeable about Pearly than I am, uh, that that package is still pretty viable. Uh, not even viable, it's actually pretty good. Uh, and will definitely be worth playing, I think. But again, if, even if you don't have those cards like me, uh, I think this kind of like uh, more quote-unquote basic version of the deck still works just fine. And, I, and one thing I will say um, is that we do have more room in the main deck to play stuff like the Triple Veilers, the Triple Imperms, and the Triple Tactics Talents. Well, we have two of those, but... Um, to play all these like disruption duels, right? Uh, Non-engine uh, kind of cards, and I really value those, especially in this meta. Um, let's see. One thing I would definitely change about the main deck moving forward is playing three of the field spell. Uh, I think it is pretty important to, to have the field spell pretty much at all times, and I'd probably cut one of the pearl leaps for it um, because the pearl leap is actually searchable by Epperly Noir, so you really only need the one copy. Um, but you really want to see straight Pearly Street, like, every single time, especially in this current metagame, right? Um, because, again, cards like Valor and Imperm are at an all-time high due to Snake Eye. Uh, these targeted negations can also be very disruptive to your strategy as well. But if you have the straight Pearly Street in play, uh, then your Pearly monsters are going to be protected by the target protection, or by targeted effects, um, the turn they're special summoned. Which might not seem like that big of a deal, right? But... Just think, not only does this protect like something like your Pearl Lily that you special summon on your turn, but if you do end up using Yeep to go into something like Noir on your opponent's turn, uh, that will also have the target protection. And uh, you won't always necessarily have the five materials on the Expert Lady Noir, so having any other extra layer of protection is also definitely very helpful. Um, for the extra deck, it's definitely pretty wide open, again, mostly because we're not on the Ghost Trick package. Um, you know, I'm playing stuff like the second happiness and second beauty. You definitely don't need these. Like, typically in a game, you only need one copy of each of these. Um, but, again, because I have a lot of room in my extra deck, because I'm not doing ghost trick stuff, uh, I have room for two of each of those. The ghost tricks, I believe, take up four slots in the extra. Um, so I think you can definitely get away without, like I said, the beauty and the happiness. I mean, to be fair, a lot of stuff in this extra deck is kind of like corner case stuff. Um, I'm thinking particularly about Ensemble Blue Robin. If you don't own this stuff, you don't feel like you have to craft it. It's 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 good, but it doesn't come up that often. 
Uh, same with like Sky Striker Ace Azalea, another UR in this extra deck that is, you know, good in some situations, but definitely does not come up like super duper often. So, um, yeah, I think the main things that you would want to have, aside from obviously the pearly stuff, is I think it is important to have two Noir just for grind games. Uh, two is definitely ideal for that. Um, that's also kind of why I like having two Happiness and Beauty um, is, again, for the grind game scenario, but again, not necessary. Um, let's see here. I mean, there's not too much to say about the build. It's it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. If you've played a pearly deck, then you, you generally know what's going on here. As far as where I think pearly's power level in the meta is, after playing both with and against it, my initial, my initial tier placing, I guess, for the deck right now, I would say it's either... It's probably high tier 3. Uh, it might end up being lower tier 2. But my my current opinion is that it's high tier three, um, mostly for the fact that while Pearly is more consistent in what it can do with the Epperly Noir, like much 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 more consistent uh, as far as like making the ex Pearly Noir, I don't think that it unlike Rescue Ace, like the new support here. And to be fair, it's only one card. Rescue Ace, well, I mean, Rescue Ace got two. Uh, I guess it's not that many more. But um, you know, one card does greatly raise uh, the amount of times you can summon Expertly Noir on turn one. It's just a matter of like, is that still a good enough thing to be doing in this meta? Um, you know, the Expertly Noir that's unaffected by activated effects it can still be pretty tricky to out, but. At the same time, it's like Underworld Goddess is becoming a little bit more common, um, and I don't know, I think one of the main things that, that I'm kind of like, eh, about Pearly uh, in this meta is just the fact that, again, if you don't have that straight Pearly Street with all these Veilers and Imperms running around, it's so much harder to actually set up that Ex-Pearly Noir. Um, granted, again, I'm only running two, I should be playing three. Um, but also Droll is making a comeback in the meta, Droll being pretty infamously good against this deck. However, uh, one benefit this deck definitely has in the meta, or just in any Master Duel meta for that matter, is the fact that it plays very well under Maxi. Uh, you really only need to do one, maybe two summons per turn to like actually do plays. But yeah, I don't know, it's interesting. We'll have to see how the meta shakes out and uh, where everything ends up settling. But again, my prediction for this deck is... Probably going to be high tier 3, maybe, maybe, maybe lower tier 2. We'll see how it ends up playing out, like I said. But let's break this list down card by card, and then we'll see some games that I played with it. So, uh, we're on 3 Effect Veiler, 2 Pearly, 3 Pearlily, 3 Maxi, 3 Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, 2 Nibiru the Primal Being, 2 Troll Tactics Talent, uh, 2 Straight Pearly Street, should be 3, uh, 3 My Friend Pearly, 2 Call by the Grave, 1 Cross Out Designator, 3 Pearly Happy Memory, 3 Pearly Pretty Memory, one uh, pearly delicious memory, three pearly sleepy memory, three infinite permanence, and then two pearly. Uh, that's going to be our main deck. And again, uh, I would probably cut the Yeep to put in the third street. Uh, for the extra deck, we're on one Sylvan Princess Sprite, one Leolesque Assembled Nightingale, one Leolesque Ensemble Robin, two Epperly Happiness, two Epperly Beauty, one Epperly Plump, one Epperly Noir, one Downward Magician, two Experly Noir, one Divine Arsenal Ah, Zeus, Sky Thunder, one Relinquished Janima, and then finally one Sky Striker Ace Azalea. Uh, and that's going to do it for our list. Let's see these duels. All right, so our first game is going to be against Mikanko, and this duel will, more than anything else, just illustrate uh, how Epperly Noir makes it a lot easier to go into Experly Noir. Uh, we're going to be taking the first turn here. As you can see, we opened Pearl Lily, My Friend, and Sleepy Memory, so uh, definitely not too bad. I'm going to lead with the Pearl Lily, and opponent's actually going to use the Ash Blossom on it. Uh, I would definitely recommend saving Ash Blossom for My Friend in pretty much any situation, but um, like here I definitely would just try to get the uh, the field spell, right? So, uh, My Friend Pearl I'm going to activate that to reveal two Sleepy Memories as well as the Delicious. Uh, end up getting one of the Sleepy Memories. So what you can do, and you can actually do this if all you open is Sleepy Memory. Uh, opponent's also going to chain Max C, but that's fine because I'm only going to do one Special Summon, so they're not going to get that many draws either. But, um, yeah, so if you open if you open Sleepy Memory and nothing else, what you can do is you can Sleepy Memory to summon out the Pearl Lily from your deck, right? Then Pearl Lily to add the My Friend, then My Friend to do the, the One Delicious 2 Sleepy Memory. And if you roll the second sleeping memory, what you can do is then, as I'm doing here, activate Pearly's effect, go into Epperly Noir, use your second sleeping memory, you then chain Epperly Noir's effect to attach it, as well as set the Pearly. Uh, now, granted, one important thing about this is that this 
while it makes an Exploit Noir, it doesn't give it tar the uh, activated effect protection because it needs to have five or more materials to do that. And as you can see, it's going to end up being a four material monster. So it's not going to have the protection. However, um, by having the two CP memory under the Epperly Noir, not only did we draw two cards off of the uh, first Epperly Noir effect during our opponent's standby phase, but those of you might remember from Pearly that uh, the CP memory is a soft once per turn, meaning it's once per copy per attached monster on the field. So I drew two because two were attached to Epperly Noir. Now, since I went into Yeep on the standby phase, I can use Expertly and draw two more cards. Uh, opponents can lead with the Diviner. I'm gonna Valor it and they're gonna chain the Call By. Completely fine with me, especially because their Call By is now not gonna be used against the Maxi. Uh, at this point, I was thinking like, probably probably Mekonko, but it could still be Drytron, right? Uh, we also have the nib in hand if we really, really need it. So they're going to send Entis. So I'm like, okay, it's, it's got to be uh, Mikanko then, right? Because uh, Diviner, uh, or Drytron rather, would have sent the uh, Herald. So I'm going to chain the Expertly Noir effect on the Diviner, putting it back into the deck. Now, again, as you can see, the Expertly Noir, because it didn't have five materials, was still affected by my opponent's cards. Uh, however, the My Friend Pearly still let me, would let me pick up the CP memory. Um, and at that point, my opponent's only got three cards left in hand. I still have both Maxi and Nibiru, uh, which is pretty wild. And I, of course, gained that advantage off of the My Friend. So, opponent's just going to concede. Uh, I'm guessing they didn't have too many plays following the uh, Diviner, just tr trying to answer the ex Pearly Noir. So, that's uh, that was a quick game. We are going to have... Actually, the next two are going to be both very, uh, very much longer. They're both six-turn duels, I believe, but... Uh, that's just a brief example of how you can go into Expert Noir much more easily with the deck now. Uh, so let's see some more uh, back and forth gameplay. And what better opponent to have for a more back and forth game than Stink Eye? Um, like I said, this is going to be longer than the last one. This will be a six turn duel, and so will the game after it, actually. So I don't have my. Uh, I'm tapped up. Let me fix that. Okay, so, uh, going second here, we're only opening the Ash Blossom, uh, but I'm going to use that against my opponent's Right Soft. Now, it does end up being the Kashira variant of Snake Eye, uh, but I, I kind of wondered that when I activated the Ash Blossom, but I figured, you know, one Ash Blossom by itself typically doesn't stop a Snake Eye turn anyway, so I'm like, you know, if I need to stop the Kashira at least, that's something. And they actually didn't have any follow-up plays, which is really, really good for me. So here my opponent's going to Ash the My Friend Pearly. Uh, even though I already have a couple of quick way spells in hand, I'm still going to use the Call By here. Because my opponent's only got two cards in hand, and I hedged a little bit. I was like, you know, if my opponent is on pure Cash Shira, the Call By probably isn't going to have much more use beyond this point in the game. Now, had I known they were on Snake Eye, I probably would have let the Ash Blossom resolve and save the Call By for, like, getting an Snake Eye Ash after it's tributed itself for, or sent itself to the grave for an effect, right? So... I'm gonna try to activate Pearl Lily here. Uh, put this way to Imperm. Again, this is actually completely fine because I already have quick play spells in hand. And, well, Pearl Lily can't add those anyway, right? She can only get the uh, uh, non quick play spells. But, uh, summoning out regular Pearly. Very good kitty finding the happy memory here. But even if I hadn't excavated anything off of Pearly, I would have just made a rank one and then battled and then gone into a Zeus. That's kind of my main plan right now, anyways. I'm just gonna make a Zeus. Um, yeah, turn one for this deck is all about setting up the Expertly Noir. I think turn two is about evaluating whether you can do the Happiness OTK or not. And if you can't, then I think it's good to typically set up a Zeus. Um, might mean there are some situations where you can set up the Expertly Noir uh, later as well. But yeah, I'm just picking the Zeus here, going for the downward, and then... Our old friend, the Divine Arsenal. Uh, definitely don't need to shotgun it here, uh, especially since that back row was bounced. Yeah, we can just let our opponent play cards first. Plus, I do have the My Friend. I ideally would like to keep this, but... And I do actually get to keep it. Opponent does not play a single card. They don't even reset the card they initially set, which I just noticed. It's kind of weird, but... Uh, yeah, even if it was Imperm, that wouldn't make sense, because they do have the Field Spell in play, so... Uh, my friend's gonna pick up the Pearl Lily, which I'll use to pick up the Street. Uh, gonna activate Street, of course, and then activate Pearl Lily's effect. Starting the Delicious. They're gonna chain Maxi. Um, that's fine, I think. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just gonna make a Plump here, and my initial plan was to just battle with Plump and Zeus and then pass, but like, I ended up making the Expertly Noir. Um, well, I actually did battle first, I just kind of changed my mind mid turn, right? I battled first, and then as I was battling, I was like, you know, 
I'm just gonna make X Quality Noir anyway. It's only one more draw. Like, I probably should have just, uh, uh, you know, done that first anyway. Like, before I battle to do a little bit more damage. It's not that big of a deal, though. Like, especially with the Expertly Noir and Zeus, both with multiple activations on the field, I, I feel so, so secure in this. Uh, in phase, we can use the field spell to attach to the Expertly. That's actually another reason why the field spell is super good, uh, especially at three in the current build, is because if you do the line we did last game, here's finally a Snake Eye Ash, but we both have the Valor for it and have max seed them already, on top of having both the Noir and the Zeus, but... Um, if you do the line I showed in the last game, right, where you make the Expertly Noir, it's only going to have the four materials. But if you have a field spell, you can give it a fifth, which is another reason why it's super, super good. So, um, our opponent does end up having Kurikara, which is kind of, kind of another thing this deck has going against it. Uh, the fact that the best deck of the format, Snake Eye, can very easily search Kurikara, which is infamously really, really good against Pearly, but it's not an auto win by any means, right? Like... Uh, as you can see here, especially if you have the field spell and or my friend in play, uh, you, you still get to pick up those resources that you lost. Um, and I don't know, not only that, but like, Kurikara is, in my experience, on the decline as far as being played in Snake Eye decks. Like, I don't think as many are playing it as when the deck first came out. And I don't think the existence of Pearly, in my opinion, is enough of a reason for Snake Eye to begin playing Kurikara again en masse. Um, if Pearly was higher up, like if Pearly, if Pearly was like an upper tier two or also like, you know, broached into the tier one category, if it was that power level, then yeah, then I think I would consider playing Kurikara again in my Snake Eye deck. But um, I just don't, like it, it's especially because I'm already playing Underworld Goddess in my, in my Snake list. I don't, I don't feel the need to add it specifically to counter Pearly here, but like, as you can see, our opponent had, like, all that disruption for our level ones, but, again, I'm not really worried about it. I could just make a rank one and then battle for lethal anyway. So, yeah, uh, there's a game against good old Snake Eye. Um, what second only opened the one of Ash Blossom, but it still ended up working out there. Uh, let's take a look at the next game. This duel. Ah, oh, this duel. This is a person after my own heart. We're playing against Adventure Sprite. Like, pretty close to the builds I've shown on the channel. The only difference is my opponent's on a playset of Tidal, uh, which I would definitely have tried if I owned. Um, very, very cool. I love my opponent's deck. <laughs> it's such a cool deck. So, uh, going second yet again here. No hand traps this time. So, we'll just have to play through whatever they end up ending on, which looks like it's going to be a fair bit as they're leading with the Terra Top going for Cherubni. Uh, now, my first thought when I saw this was like, okay, is it Burning Abyss or are we just using the adventure engine? Either way, I was like engaged. I was like excited to play against my opponent. Um, I already love the shenanigans they're up to here. A uh, faithful adventure is gonna summon out the token, of course, please. And then I saw Nimble Beaver and I was like, oh, it is, let's go, let's go. It's, it's adventure sprite. Ah, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, so yeah, pitching the Draco back for the Griffin Rider, and of course we'll summon the Griffin Rider too, establishing the Omni before uh, going into the main kind of combo line here. Oh, they even have a blue in hand too. Their hand was really good. Terra Top, Beaver, Blue. It's a very good opening hand. As you can see though, uh, they didn't even end up needing the Beaver normal summon effect. They didn't get it because they did the adventure line, but again, did not even need it here. Okay, what did they add with Jet? Was it Smashers? It was Smashers, okay. All right, Elf and, or Jet rather, and Beaver, they're gonna make the IP. Oh, they already had the starter in hand too. Wow, my opponent's hand for turn one was absolutely cracked, oh my god. Hit Knight early, set to pass. We know one of them is Smashers as well, so a lot to play through on this board, but I like that we have the triple attack here. Um, I, I love this card so, so much. It's really good going first as a hand rip, and it's really good going second as a board breaker. I just, and of course, if neither is super applicable, you can always just draw two. I just I love that card, it's so good. And we know we're gonna proc it here because our opponent has a lot of stuff on board uh, that they're threatening to disrupt us with, right? So. 
I can activate the My Friend. Opponent's cheating the Griffin Rider here. This is why I used My Friend here. I was really hoping to bait out the Griffin Rider before the Triple Attack came down, and thankfully we were able to. Now I'm going to use Triple Attack to steal the IP, and now my opponent's only threats are the two face down cards. We know one is Smashers, uh, the other one is a little bit of a mystery, but I'm not the most concerned about it. Ah, uh, we had a bad kitty here, did not find any quick play spells, but I actually didn't need her to. Um, because I have the pretty memory in hand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a beauty uh, with the pearly effect. Then I'm going to use pearl lily to make epperly noir. Was the plan, uh, my opponent used smashers here, but that's actually totally fine. Because, once again, I'm just going to try to make a Zeus here. Like, I can't OTK, I'm just going to make a Zeus. Especially because... Due to the nature of my opponent's deck, they had to commit everything to the field. Also, due to the nature of my opponent's deck, I know this very well as a, as a Sprite enjoyer. Sprite, as much as I love it, does not really have that many one-card plays um, at all. Like, my opponent has to rip Starter exactly because they've already used Nimble Beaver. So, like, there's... I'm trying to think. Is there really nothing else that can top deck for one-card plays? That's the thing, Sprite doesn't have like a Debris Dragon, they don't have like a Normal Stone to bring back a level 2 or something. Which kind of go away, that would be insane, honestly, now that I say that out loud. Um, but yeah, no, one top deck again is just not going to be enough to uh, to get their plays getting back up and going. Uh, Imperm actually not a bad top deck here, I of course would have preferred Gas to finish off my opponent, but... I like having multiple kinds of disruption, right? Like, we can threaten with the board wipe, but if they do something just a little bit intimidating, but not too bad, we can just imperm it. They're just gonna end up setting a monster. Uh, now, me being acutely aware of this deck, I know it could be Nimble Sunfish, which it actually does end up being. So if I had just battled into that, uh, they would have gotten more bodies on the board. I wouldn't have been able to win the duel here. Uh, this turn, rather. I wouldn't have been able to win the duel this turn either. So. Um, my, my niche knowledge of this, uh, or my knowledge of this very niche deck came very, very much in handy here, uh, in exactly this game. Um, but hats off to my opponent. I love that deck. Love that deck. Uh, we do have one last game to see before we end off. Let's go into that. And we're going to end the same way we started by fighting against Makonko. Not a surprise to see more Makonko decks. Not even because they got, well, they did get new cards, they're just not good. Um, but the Secret Pack more than anything else. And I've considered pulling from the Secret Pack as well, honestly. Going second again! I didn't realize we had so many going second duels. Um, kind of par for the course lately, I guess. Uh, opponent's going to lead with the Ashoka Pillar to grab the Abaresque, or Arabesque. However you say it. Uh, Arabesque will equip to the Ashoka Pillar, waiting for it to activate its effect, then we're going to maxi. Uh, just making sure we're guaranteed getting that draw. Not that I really need it here, I already have a ton of quick play spells in hand, but just want to give myself the best opportunity, right? So, uh, Mikanko, another deck that can play very well. That's like, the neat thing about all these uh, decks that are not only getting boosted power, they also all play pretty well under maxi, uh, Mikanko, Pearly, and Rescue Ace, right? So. I'll start with a happy memory for a Pearl Lily to add the My Friend here. Uh, I can't happiness to DK, of course, because if I try to do that, um, I'm just going to end up taking out my own life point to the Huli. We all know what the Congos do, right? So, uh, And they also have a Maxi, which is pretty annoying. But, um, you know, like I was just saying, we do have the ability to play pretty decently well under a Maxi. Oh, that's right. I think I'm going to end up going for a Zeus here anyway. Okay, so the rivalry looks kind of bad here, but what I can actually do is chain a quick play spell, and then that will let me proc the happiness effect to bounce. They're going to use rivalry, and I thought they might be going for the Mask of Fool, or the Axe of Fools here, to negate the effect. So I decided to chain another quick play spell and get another bounce. That way I can also potentially bounce the face down card as well as the rivalry. I need to get this rivalry off of the field. Uh, so we're bouncing that. We do give them a lot of draws here, which is the only unfortunate... Oh, but then they just take it anyway, that's right. Uh, I could make Plump here with the Pearly, but I think I just seem to... No, okay. We're gonna excavate first. We have the EP memory, and then I just concede, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I felt like I just conceded here at some point, because it's like... <sighs> Here's the thing. Like, I could go for a Zeus, in theory, but in practice that involves me special summoning, what... Three more times, I answer their board, they draw for turn and have ten cards in hand. I just, I don't think there's any realistic shot of me coming back here. Might have been a slightly early concede, but I, I, I don't think we're winning that game. Uh, that'll do it for these pearly games. Thank you everybody so much for watching them. Um, oh, I didn't talk about the mate at all. Um, I love the new pearly mate. Might actually just be my favorite mate. Um... 
Maybe even above Sprite. Ah, I can't say that. Might be my second favorite mate <laughs> behind Sprite Blue. So very, very good though. I, I, I like her quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it for these duels. Let's move now to our outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. That means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description. One of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch vods as well as some additional uh, non Yu-Gi-Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.